Hello and welcome back to British English with Ali. In today's lesson I'm going to try something a little bit different and give you some examples of sarcasm. Now sarcasm is probably one of the most favoured forms of humour in Britain. I don't think it's shared by Americans or other English-speaking countries. It's a very prominent feature of life in the UK. So I'm going to be giving you a couple of examples of sarcasm, explaining what it is and why we find it funny, as well as showing you some phrases which are the same, one of which is used with sarcasm and one of which is used seriously, and so that you can understand the difference and understand when someone is using sarcasm and why. So please do enjoy this video and let's get on with the first point. So basically, sarcasm is a way of gently mocking or making fun, not using the truth, um, but perhaps using a complete opposite of the truth. For example, someone is taking a really, really long time and you're late and you're getting impatient. So you're like, yeah, just take your time. Clearly, we don't mean take your time. We actually mean hurry up. But instead of directly saying hurry up, this strict order to do something, we're just saying, yeah, just take your time. We're kind of implicitly or indirectly saying, you know, you're, you're taking a long time and you should hurry up. You know, just take your time. That's fine. And because it's so different to the actual reality, this is kind of how we can understand that this is sarcasm. Another example is that I'm buying a packet of chewing gum, very small packet. I'm about to put it in my pocket after I've paid for it. And the cashier says, would you like a bag? I'm thinking, why on earth do I need a bag for this tiny little packet? And I'd say, hmm, it is a big thing. Where am I going to put it? You know, I'm saying without saying that, no, I don't need a bag. This tiny packet will fit in my pocket. I don't need a plastic bag. So we are completely bending the reality. And I think that one of the easiest ways to understand when someone is being sarcastic is to look at the situation and look at the response. And if they're very opposite, um, this is probably a case of sarcasm. Now I'm going to give you an example of what we might say if it starts to rain. We are out, we have just styled our hair, and suddenly the heavens open and it starts pouring with rain. And we can say, great, just what I needed. Now, this is sarcastic because it's completely opposite to what we truly feel. And it's better than just sort of saying, Oh no, it's raining. It's just that kind of like way of amusing ourselves, I suppose. So if we were to have this attitude, the rain starts coming and we say, yep, great, perfect, just what I needed. As opposed to we go outside and the sun suddenly appears. Oh great, this is gorgeous. This is just what I needed. I really needed that ray of sunshine to lift my spirits or, you know, make me feel good. So there is a difference in the way that we say it, great versus great. So this is another way of understanding is this sarcasm or is this serious? That might be a little bit more of a attitude, great, yeah, take your time, this sort of feeling as opposed to great or yeah, take your time. It's all in the kind of nuance, in the body language, in the way it's spoken, in the sound. So. It's a subtle thing, but I think once you hear several examples of sarcasm, you will slowly start to understand it more. Personally, I am a big sarcasm user. Um, if my friend has a bag with nothing in it, I might say, oh, it's a bit heavy, do you want me to help? And often with Japanese friends or American friends, in countries where they just don't use sarcasm so much, they may respond in a way like, oh, don't worry, there's actually nothing in this bag. So um, don't worry, I, I don't mind carrying it or I don't need any help. And for me, I'm like, well, I, 
I know, like we both understand this bag has nothing in it and it's not heavy. Um, so for me, it's quite clear that it's sarcasm, but for cultures that don't use sarcasm, it can be really baffling as to what this British person is talking about. Another example might be if you get some negative feedback from your boss or employer and they say, I'm sorry to give you this bad news and uh, deliver their bad news. And afterwards you can kind of say, yeah, my self-esteem is really high right now. I'm just feeling great. I'm so competent. Clearly this is not how we feel. We actually feel bummed, a little bit sad, and a little bit down. Our self-esteem is not high, we're feeling quite low. And so in a way, we use this sarcasm to protect our feeling. If we just say, I feel really sad and um, I, I'm doubting my capabilities, we've kind of put our hearts out there and it can be a little bit awkward when someone has exposed themselves so readily. Instead, we might just say, yep, I'm feeling great. I think I can just take over the world. I am superwoman. In this situation, we subtly imply that perhaps this is not what we're feeling at all, but because this sort of jokey aspect of sarcasm is there, is presented in the conversation, the person we're talking to doesn't have to think, oh gosh, how can I console her? Um, should I you know, give her a pat on the back or say, there, there, don't worry? You don't have to do that with sarcasm. Sarcasm is a way of delivering the message by looking at the implicit and subtle context that may have happened to provoke this comment. And so, you know, the person doesn't have to do all the emotional stuff. They can understand how the person feels without having to deal with the emotions so much. If I go to the bank and they give me a mountain of paperwork to do, I can look at it and say, well, this is going to be fun. Nobody in the situation thinks that this mountain of paperwork is going to be fun, but it's just a way of me making jest about this boring situation, making it light, and just getting a little sort of giggle as a response and, and just keeping the atmosphere light. When somebody uses sarcasm to you, it could be for two reasons. One could have a slightly negative undertone, like, yeah, great job, that was good when it clearly wasn't. This is a little bit cruel, and I think that's where American humour and British humour differ. British, I think we, we enjoy this sort of slightly more cruel or mocking sense of humour, whereas Americans, I think, just have a much more direct and obvious, less complicated kind of humour. So I think Americans don't actually find sarcasm very funny, nor do they really use it so much, or especially not in the way that British people do. The other way that someone might be using it is, as I said before, to hide the more difficult reality of a situation. So if someone did a bad job, we don't really want to say, you did a bad job. It's too direct, it's, it's too uncomfortable. So just saying like, well, uh, that, was, uh, that was good, you know. That's a way of just sort of, we, we're saying something that is completely untrue, but rather than it being a lie, it's more of a, just a way of skirting around the negative side of things. And yes, we are showing that we've recognized this wasn't the best thing that this person did, but we are communicating that in a very different kind of way. So we're not always using sarcasm to be cruel, we're sometimes using it to avoid difficult situations and also just using it because we find it funny. I find sarcasm really, really funny, um, but I will say that not everyone does. And I think it's just a very British style of thing that we kind of intrinsically, automatically use. This is a set phrase which I often use, which confuses people. So after a huge dinner, I say for example, this kind of Japanese kaiseki meal, and I'm absolutely stuffed, I'm completely full, I cannot fit another peanut inside of me, I'm just so full. And at the end of the big meal, I might say, oh, I'm starving. Everyone around the table, including myself, is very full, but I don't know why I say it. It's just like a silly little thing to kind of make light. If I just said, I'm very full, 
it's kind of like, yeah, I know. But it's just a silly way of just recognizing that the meal has been extremely um, abundant and filling and I'm, I'm satisfied. This is a complete dad joke. <laughs> but for example, we're in a nice restaurant and the waiter comes over and says, how was your meal? And you might say, it was terrible. I had to eat it all. Now, clearly, if it was terrible, you wouldn't have eaten it all. But the implication that, oh, it was terrible, so I had to remove it, I had to finish it all, it's, it's gone. You know, obviously, if you finish the whole plate, you're probably using sarcasm. The reality of the situation shows that this empty plate was clearly eaten and enjoyed. The person doesn't really think that the meal was terrible, but it's just a silly way of saying, yeah, I mean, it was so good, I finished everything, um, but I'm using sarcasm to communicate that in a slightly more silly way. Well, I hope that this lesson was helpful for you. I would absolutely love to know about any examples of sarcasm that you have either heard or used, and also if any of these points were interesting or funny for you. Um, do give this video a like if it was helpful for you, and until next time, bye-bye.